Did the biblical flood actually happen? Was it just a local flood or was it a worldwide flood? As we're going to see, it was a worldwide flood. The evidence is overwhelming. It isn't just speculation because we actually have the history to back it up. We aren't just extrapolating on data because we have the science and we have the history, which both show that there is a worldwide flood. That is coming in literally six days. You are gonna die. You gotta get on this boat. Everywhere we looked, Steve showed me evidence of the incredible power of moving water. He quickly laid down these enormous layers, then quickly eroded them away. Steve wanted to show me where the floodwaters first hit the continent, so he took me deeper into the canyon. There are so many glaring holes if you ignore the fact that there was a worldwide flood. The Grand Canyon can't be explained. There are sea creature bones on the highest mountains in the Himalayas, all over continents, which make no sense unless there actually was a worldwide flood. And we're looking at the granite basement rock, which is the, the core of the continent, if you will. And then we see the flat-lying strata on top of it. The boundary between the granite rock below and the tapeat sandstone above is this surface we call the Great Unconformity. Why, why does it appear to be such a, a stark line? I mean, uh, it's clear. I think it's an erosional boundary of colossal scale. We're looking at something that uh, shows the, the magnitude of flood flow over a surface. And is it just here? The Great Unconformity is continent-wide. I've seen it, I believe, in the Middle East. It's over in Europe. Uh, it's in Africa, and here it is uh, under the North American continent. So we've got this uh, layer. How thick is this layer? What goes up from here? Well, we have the sock mega sequence here, if you will, a thousand feet of sandstone, shale, limestone that goes continent wide. There are four other big sequence mm. packages of strata that sit above it. Those are also very continuous like this. What we're seeing here is rather representative of the rest of the world. It makes one uh, really question the notion that this all happened because of a small local flood. We're talking about something enormous. The power moving water was beveling and pulverizing rock, depositing great thicknesses of layers and calling our minds to think about a global flood. The Grand Canyon cannot be explained unless there was a worldwide flood. This is coming from Steve Austin, who has a PhD in geology. And unlike other scientists who don't have the answers, and they're extrapolating on data with ignoring history, Steve Austin has the history. So we can see what actually happened because we have the science and the history on our side, that there was a rapid change and that it can explain the Grand Canyon. The conventional story is entirely different though. It would say that there is a lot of time between each of these layers. Some people have said that the Great Unconformity boundary here represents half a billion years. You mean between the granite we see in that first layer of the sedimentary rock? Yeah, they say that there may be half a billion years there. Okay, and that's what their explanation of uh, Earth history would ask them to consider. Yet when you come here and look at this, nearly a featureless plain. Uh -huh. It's not an exactly a plain, but it's a gently rolling surface. Mm -hmm. And would that be the product of billions of years? Or would that be the product of the power of water planing off a surface? Yeah. Time is foreign to a good explanation here. Mm -hmm. And so we want to explain what we see. Everywhere we look, we see the power of water. And it's water on a colossal scale, and that's the story here in Grand Canyon. It's not a little water and a lot of time. It's a lot of water and a little time. Exactly. It was a lot of water and a little time, which is backed up by the history and the science. And if you know what the Grand Canyon is and how huge it is and how much water it would take to fill that and the fact that it's in the middle of a landmass, where did all that water come from and it rapidly disappeared? It can only be explained by the flood. If the flood really did occur, what evidence would we look for? You know, most people haven't even thought of that question, let alone thought of an answer. You know, the Bible says that the fountains of the great deep were open, the rain fell from heaven for 40 days and 40 nights, the waters rose 150 days until all the high hills under the whole of the heaven were covered and the mountains were covered. 
and we're told that all land-dwelling, air-breathing life perished except for those on the ark. Wouldn't we expect to find billions of dead plants and animals buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth? And that's exactly what we find. This is exactly what we see. It's not, oh, the science versus Bible. We have all of history. If there actually was a worldwide flood, then we would expect all the cultures to have a, a flood story. And they do. Cultures that are completely separate, like the Aztecs, have a flood story, have creation, because that is the shared story of humanity. It is all of history. And also, the scientists, these scientists, are telling you what actually happened. But the modern mainstream scientists are trying to lie to you because they are history deniers. They are history ignorers. They don't care about the history, they care about their specific interpretation. Sea creatures buried high in mountains on the continents. That's right, marine creatures that live on the ocean are found in mountains like the Himalayas. How did they get there? Unless the ocean waters rose up over the continents. And we find marine creatures in rock layers all over the continents, everywhere around the world. Scientists who deny history have no explanation for this. How did those sea creature bones get on the top of the mountain? They come up with wild fairy tales. They will literally believe whatever fairy tale because they don't care about what actually happened. It's okay to speculate and to extrapolate, but at the end of the day, you need to read history. You need to hear about the story of what actually happened. You can't just extrapolate on the data and make up these wild fairy tales. Read history. We'd find rapidly buried plants and animals. Well, we do, fossils. We find fossils not only of plants, but of bees, of bats. We find fish that are, uh, haven't finished having their breakfast eating another fish they're buried and fossilized. Ichthyosaurs giving birth to babies and they're fossilized. We find delicately preserved fossilized jellyfish. How do you fossilize a jellyfish slowly? Evidence number three, rapidly deposited sediment layers right across the continents. We find that everywhere we look. Look at the red wall limestone, full of fossils in the Grand Canyon. Yet the same limestone layer is found in the same position over in Pennsylvania, then over in England, and even in the Himalayas. The chalk beds, the White Cliffs of Dover, we find the same chalk beds in Europe, in the Middle East, over into Kazakhstan, we find the same chalk beds with the same fossils in Texas and the Midwestern United States. The evidence we see in the geological record shows that the, it was rapid, it was instant, it happened super fast, it wasn't some gradual thing. It was a rapid worldwide flood, just like the Bible says. Rapid or no erosion between uh, sediment layers. Again, you think in terms of the uh, Coconino sandstone and the Hermit Shale, it's a, there's a knife edge, flat featureless boundary between those two rock layers for mile after mile through the Grand Canyon. Yet the geologists claim that there's 10 million years missing at that boundary. What would have happened during 10 million years of weathering and erosion? You'd get a topography, not a flat featureless boundary. The bottom of the Grand Canyon, the Tapit sandstone sits on the pre-flood rocks and we have evidence of huge erosion there. So if someone says to you, you believe in a river like flood, you believe in Noah's Ark, say yes. That's what the science and history say. It's not a lack of evidence. There is plenty of evidence. What would I need to show you to prove that there was a worldwide flood? Bring up the Grand Canyon, bring up all these fossils being where they shouldn't be. It doesn't make any sense unless there was a worldwide flood. But it's not a lack of evidence because there's plenty of evidence. It is that, you know, I don't want to believe that. That's a fairy tale. But then they'll come up with crazy fantasies <laughs> that have no basis in history to make their broken, atheist, Darwinist, ancient earth, anti-flood system work. They are the fairy tale believers. We believe in history. We believe in science. We are Christians. We are truth seekers. We believe that there actually was a flood because there is so much evidence for it. Positive. But that means the 300 million years never happened. All those rock layers had to be rapidly deposited in quick succession during the flood year. So you see, when you ask the right question, you get the right answers. Who are we going to believe? The scientists who weren't there, who don't know everything, who sometimes make mistakes, or the word of God who was there, who saw what happened and told us what happened during the flood. And what we see in God's world agrees with what we read in God's word. Perfectly said. Why are you putting your faith and hope into these fallen men, these lab coats, 
who lie to us and they have been wrong so many times on so many important issues. Why are you going to trust them? All they do is lie to us, even when the science and history vindicates the Bible. Why would you trust fallen man and not the word of God and not the church and what the church fathers taught? There was a flood. 300 cubits? I'm like, where am I gonna build an ark that big in the metaverse? Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I can make lots more videos on the flood, on young earth, on creationism, on scientism. Just let me know if there's any anything you know in the Bible that atheists are like, oh, that's a contradiction. That didn't actually happen. That's not the history. That's not the science. Because often, 100% of the time, they are gonna be wrong or they're misinterpreting it. So we can pray for them because there is so much evidence in the history and in science vindicating Christianity. So comment if you want me to do anything next. Thank you. God bless.